Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about the vector triple product. And there are actually two versions of the vector triple product, as we will see in this video. So basically, let me just write it here, product. There's a scalar version, which is, I think, the more useful one in terms of geometry. And then there is a vector version which is useful in terms of identity, so things that will allow us to simplify things that involve operations with factors later on. So we're going to start with the scalar definition. So basically, assume that we have something like this. Let's say that you have a vector b here and a vector c here. You know that you take the vector cross c, so basically you're um, vector product of those two, your cross product, and then what you get is actually you get another vector that is normal to those two, but if you take the magnitude of that cross product, not only do you get the length of that normal vector, you also get the area of a parallelogram that is formed by basically projecting these two vectors along in those directions, so this would be parallel to that one, and then this one would be parallel to that one, and they would have the same length. So basically, this area here is given by the magnitude of that cross product. So that's a really interesting property we introduced previously. Now, imagine what happens when you have a third vector pointing in some arbitrary direction. Let's call it vector A. And what happens if you actually grab this area, so this scalar quantity, and you multiply it by every single point of length along that A. So basically imagine that you're multiplying this by the total length of A. What do you actually think you're gonna get from that? Well it turns out that you're gonna get the volume of a parallel pipette. So basically that's just a shape that looks like a cube but it has some angles. So basically this would be some angle here, uh, some angle 5 with respect to the surface here that is perpendicular there and then you have some angle theta b between b and c and that whole volume is actually going to be given by the following you're gonna have the dot product of a with the cross product of b and c and one of the really nice properties that you'll find about this is that it turns out that you can actually grab any two vectors and then take the dot product with another one and you still get the same answers that's a really really interesting property here now, another property that might seem even more interesting is that it turns out that you can actually calculate the triple scalar product by representing this as a 3x3 three three determinant where the first row are all the elements of A. So we have B1, B2, B3, and then C1, C2, and C3. And we know that in order to evaluate a 3x3 three three determinant, we just cross multiply and take the 2x2 two two determinant. So basically, this would be A1 times B2, B3, C2, C3, minus A2 times the determinant of B1, B3, C1, and C3. And then the last element in that will be A3 times the determinant of B1, B2, C1 and C2. Now that is basically the, mo the most direct method of finding that if you want to have to calculate angles. And this is a really 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 neat result. I think this is probably one of the more most interesting applications of vectors and vector operations is that you can pretty much just combine a dot part with a cross part and you get a volume out of it. So that's really interesting. Now there is some skepticism about this so I'm just gonna do something very very simple here just so that you can actually be convinced that this that this identity actually holds so I'm gonna draw the same shape and we know that the base the base is basically vector C here you have your vector B and then you have your vector A here now suppose that instead of taking the cross product of these two, I take the, the cross product of A and C, right? So basically I'm going to take A cross C, 
and I'm going to take the magnitude of that to get the area of that parallelogram there. Now what happens when I multiply this by the whole, by basically the length of V? Well, basically this area is going to get multiplied by that scalar quantity and we're going to have a full volume. So basically this would also be the same as saying A cross C dot problem with B. And you notice that it doesn't really matter what, whether I put this here on this side on the, or the other side because we know that by the property of the dot part of two vectors that the order of multiplication does not actually matter. So I could use the same argument and say, well, how about I take A and B just to prove that this is true. I take A and B, take the cross product of those two vectors, and now I'm going to multiply that by the total length of C, so basically I'm going to run this whole area across the length of C and then I'm going to construct this three-dimensional shape and this scalar triple product is going to give me essentially just the volume of that shape. So that is how you prove that geometrically from a very, very picturesque kind of perspective. All right, so now we're going to move on to an actual example. So let me just get rid of this here so we can have some space to work with and let's say I give you three vectors let's say I give you the following let's have A equals to 3, 1, 2 B equals to 1, 2, 3 and then let's have C equals to 2, minus 1 and 4 now to make this a little bit more interesting let's plot this on a set of three axes just so that we know what our shape is going to look like. So we have X, Y, and Z here. And we are going to have some um, numbers going in the negative direction. So let's see what we have. This one's going to be 3 here. And I'm going to use different colors um, so that you can actually visualize them. So 3 here, 1 along here, and then 2 here. So basically somewhere along here we're going to have four vectors so that's going to be A and you can get the idea that that's an arrow pointing from the origin to that point now let's draw our vector B so that's going to be 1 here then 2 here and 3 here so this one is going to be a little bit larger here alright so that's our vector there and this is going to point like this so that's our vector B and now let's have purple, so we're going to have 2 here, then minus 1 along the y-axis, so that's minus 1 there, and then 4. So we're going to have the vector pointing out in this direction here. So it's going to go from the origin to this point here. Alright, so this looks like a, a, a very interesting kind of shape, so let's see if we can actually draw what's happening. So first of all, Let's say we want to find the, the following triple scalar product. So we have A uh, dot with B cross C. So let's just do the regular one. And we're going to draw a 3x3 three three determinant here. So, okay, so the first thing we need to do is draw the shape. So we're going to have B cross C. So basically we have this here. So let's try and draw a parallelogram out of these two shapes. So we're going to have this and that. So that's basically going to be that. And then basically we're going to run this across the length of A. So we're going to have some shape coming in this way like this. And just to fill it in, I'm just going to draw it in orange. So basically our shape is going to look something like this. It's not obviously not going to be 100% accurate. But you get the idea that this is sort of the kind of shape that we would be getting in three dimensions. So it seems like a reasonable kind of shape. So now let's just put our components here. We have 3, 1, and 2. Then we have 1, 2, 3, and 2, minus 1, and 4. Okay, so let's just write down the components here. We're going to start with 3 times the determinants of 2, 3, minus 1, and 4, minus 1 times the determinant of 1, 3, 2, and 4. And then we're going to get plus 2 times 1, 2, 2, minus 1. 
So what does this come down to? Well, we're going to have 3 times 2 times 4, that's 8, minus minus 3, so that's plus 3 here, minus 4, minus 3 times 6, so that's 6 here, and then plus 2 times minus 1, minus 4. Alright, so now we're just going to have to group this together, so this is going to come down to, this is going to be 33 minus, uh, that's actually going to be a plus 2 here, because we have minus 2 times the minus, and then we have minus 5 times 2, that's minus 10. So 33 minus 10 is 23 plus 2, 25. So in the end, the volume of that whole shape is going to be 25 units cubed. And that's a really neat result. We just found the, the volume of this shape, which might actually have a bunch of angles that are a little bit hard to calculate. And because of the orientation that it has on the 3D set of axes, it would be kind of hard to do it just by simple trigonometry. But we just did this in a few lines of calculations, and it turned out to be a really nice answer. So this just comes to show one of the many applications of vectors when it comes to geometry. Now... There isn't really a, a whole lot more to the scalar dot product, that's the scalar triple product, I, uh, I should say. This is pretty much it, but what I want to do now is introduce you to the vector triple product, which is slightly different to this, but it has some really nice properties. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the vector triple product is actually this one here, so we have two cross products happening. And it turns out that this whole expression actually reduces to a very simple expression. So we're going to have the vector B. We're going to have a scalar quantity that results from the dot product of A we see. So this kind of multiplication is allowed because we know that whatever results from here is a scalar, and you can multiply a scalar with uh, a vector. You just multiply a scalar by each element of that vector. Then we're going to have minus C A cross uh, sorry dot b so this is a really really important property because there are some cases and we will see this later on in vector calculus that sometimes we are given an expression like this which can actually be quite ugly because if you think about it you're taking a cross product and they're taking a cross product of that cross product so it can get quite messy and quite hard to deal with especially if you're dealing with things like derivatives and all that but if you reduce it to this, you're actually making things a lot easier for you because now you have scalar products, so you have dot products, which are really easy to calculate, and then you just multiply them by these two vectors. Now, one of the things that we need to point out is that this kind of operation here is not distributed, so basically it's not associative, I should say. We can't really do this. So... If we do this kind of thing, because the grouping has changed, we're taking now cross product with this first and then that, it turns out that this is actually equal to the following. So we're going to have cross C minus B cross A cross C. So it isn't as obvious as it might seem. So basically we need to remember that in this case, with the triple vector product, the order of multiplication actually matters. So this is just a remark for that. And we won't be using this a lot in vector algebra, but when we come uh, later on, when we come into vector calculus, we will actually make use of this to derive some interesting results and simplify calculations a little bit. So this is what the vector triple product is essentially. And in the next video, I want to introduce you to the idea of linear algebra as seen from a geometrical perspective using planes and vectors.